All right, what up, heads? So, happy birthday to Jerry to start out. Um, pretty cool because Dead Flintstone happens to have a really good old school high end boombox that still works, and we've been able to play some cassettes. So, for Jerry's birthday, I found and listened to and recorded for everyone um, the 1982 KINK radio here in Portland's interview with Jerry. Um, it's pretty cool. He talks about a bunch of different shit. Um, very timely because it was 10 years after the Anita shows and they were coming back to play in Eugene again 10 years later. And uh, they talk about that and they talk about um, like Go to Heaven and Althea and a bunch of other cool shit. It's rad. Anyway, got this from Jeff Evans years and years ago. Appreciate you, Jeff. Jeff is one of the people in my book tour head. Um, happy birthday to Jerry. Let's listen to this. All right. It's good shit. I don't know if it's out there a lot or not, and I don't care. I like it, and I'm pretty sure everybody's going to like it, too. Peace. Happy birthday, Jer. Our kink focus tonight with the Grateful Dead's Jerry Garcia. Hi, Jerry. Hello, Alan. You know, we're all looking forward to your concert coming up uh, Saturday in Benita, Jerry. It was, uh, what, uh, just about 10 years ago that you did an outdoor concert down there. And a lot of people have all kinds of uh, memories of that concert, but I'd like to hear what yours are. Uh, well, the last time we played there, it was the hottest day of the year. And it was, uh, my recollection of it mostly is that it was terribly uncomfortable. But I understand that a lot of people have a fond, fond recollections of it. But I remember that they had to uh, bring water in a big old tank truck just to spray people to cool them off a little. From my point of view, from a performance standpoint, it was uh, there were lots of things going against it. You know, the, the tremendous heat does terrible things to uh, the instruments. And, um, you know, I, I remember mostly stuff like um, just my guitar constantly going out of tune from the, the temperature and, uh, and, and worrying about whether Bob uh, was going to pass out or not. But it was one of those places, well, you know, like uh, the... With weather in, in Oregon, it's you know, always pretty iffy, you know, probably better that it was too hot than, uh, than raining. Me and my uncle, I went right down, stop my ride, I went to Texas Bound. We stopped over, I used Santa Fe, right there in the morning. Stop. Went to the barroom. Would 
You know, I'm thinking of the people who were lucky enough to see the concert 10 years ago. How is this Grateful Dead concert this time around going to differ from that one? Well, as far as I'm concerned, we're, we're 10 years better than we were then. You know, there's, there's that and just as a basic consideration. I mean, the, the band's music is quite, is, is different, you know, in a lot of ways than it was then. I mean, that, I, it's difficult to make those kind of comparisons. I am hoping this one will be a lot better for a lot of reasons. And also, just uh, things like, uh, just our experience in being able to put on these kind of shows and the experience of the people up there, the people that we'll be working with and, and all that, just to produce a good, uh, a good event, you know, has improved uh, over the years. And, and uh, technologically, I'm sure the sound will certainly be better than it was 10 years ago. I would say that it would be, you know, a lot better than it was.
phone right now. We're talking with Jerry Garcia, lead guitar player and leader of the band The Grateful Dead. Again, it's great to have uh, Jerry on the telephone here. And I want to ask a question about a gentleman that you write with, Robert Hunter. I'm interested in how you guys go about writing a tune. Do you, for example, does Robert Hunter give you a set of lyrics and then do you take them and work on those lyrics alone and make a song out of them? Do you actually sit down together and, and, and put a tune together that way? Uh, how, how do we you do it all, those all the different ways and a few more too. I mean, uh, sometimes uh, um, uh, the music comes first. Sometimes I'll write a melody and I'll have the phrasing and, uh, and the form and uh, the melody and even some sense of... Uh, of uh, how I want the lines structured in terms of where I want vowels to be, you know, where I want open vowels and uh, and and that, you know, and and Hunter is uh, such a good craftsman that he can write to order you know, on that level. I mean, what happens is I'll go over to his house say, and and play through my ideas and and sing to him, you know, sort of scat sing uh, the way I want the tune to be, and then he'll work on it for a while, and then sometimes we hone an idea or work on it over a long period of time. His output is much greater than mine is. I mean, he's, he really is a writer, and I'm not really a composer, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. I'm sort of a composer by uh, default or something. Uh, when we were starting to play, um, music, there's always been this thing of uh, having original music, you know, and, and so we all sort of have taken our hand at it at one time or another. In reality, we've done everything, I mean, including the, the you know, sort of kid paying out the approach of me sitting down at the piano and Hunter standing there with a notebook, you know. I mean, we, we've done it, do it all a different way.
perfect example of what I think is a beautifully handcrafted Robert Hunter, Jerry Garcia tune from The Grateful Dead. That one sounds good. You know, I was sure happy to see you performing on acoustic guitars and the band playing acoustically. It's been many years since you've done that. Do you like playing acoustically? I do, yeah. I think for us to pull it off and to really enjoy the acoustic, our acoustic set to pull us, it really requires the right environment. And for us, that's like a, a, a tasty theater. A tasty theater is uh, the best place for the acoustic stuff to work out, right? It's, you know, it, it has a sort of a delicate quality to it, which doesn't project too well in super large uh, venues. Well, it makes sense. It's a little difficult to perform intimately and acoustically in a place like the Memorial Coliseum. Exactly right. Mm -hmm. Jerry Garcia of the Grateful Dead. 
right now good to have him on the telephone and i want to ask you a little bit about an album called go to heaven great uh, rock and roll album by the grateful dead uh, your last studio album as a matter of fact one tune in particular that i just love off that album jerry is althea oh, thank you very much i like that tune myself it's a nice little tune it's one of those songs that i uh, still feel it's one second when you heard Alabama Get Away on hit radio? Uh, yeah. Sure, I was. I, um, although, from the time we recorded it, it, it had that, you know, it, it, people were just thinking of it as a single just because it was very obviously, you know, a short rock and roll. It had the requirements, you know, it was a short rock and roll tune with, uh, you know, an easily um, remembered refrain, you know, that, that sort of stuff.
You know, it seems to me that there's this incredible, what I would call almost a timeless, extremely loyal bind between your fans called Deadheads and, and, and the Grateful Dead and their music. Do you ever attempt to verbalize about that or try to explain it? Uh, yeah, we attempt to verbalize about it. I mean, me and the band discuss it, uh, and a lot of people ask us about it, of course, you know, so it's a question, it's a question that's, not, that's uh, not new to me. I mean, it, it comes up pretty frequently, and I don't have, I really can't explain it, but, but uh, I sort of know what it's about, and it really is, it, it's really that the audience kind of shares our involvement with the band and with the music. People very much have their own individual um, relation to the music, and that, that has something to do with it. The fact that there's an open end there somewhere, that people can make their, make their own, uh, form their own opinions and their own uh, criterion and so forth for, well, you know, how they feel they're involved and what they like about it. But from our point of view, from the point of view of those of us who are members of the band, I th I, it really, I, I, it has a lot to do with, I think, our, just our basic approach to, to uh, music, which is not so much something that we structure and think about, but it's more like, uh, like our personalities. It's, it's one of those things that you can't really do something about. It just, it's, it's just a, a sort of a fortunate combination of, uh, of, well, you know, that description that you just gave about the band really applies personally to you, I think, and, and how you play. You know, Jerry, I get the feeling that when you take off on a lead guitar solo that you really don't exactly know where you're going. No, I don't. <laughs> no, I don't. It's, not, it's a matter of sort of having faith, you know. It, 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 and, it, and that's also part of what makes it interesting and uh, fun to, to do and to be involved with after all this time, you know what I mean? It's the, you don't know what's coming next. You don't know what's going to happen uh, truly, and and as a result, sometimes really amazing things happen. Sometimes really remarkable stuff happens, and I don't, I really don't believe that it would be that way unless you uh, started off with the basic assumption that something special could happen. You know what I mean? It, that there's sort of an act of faith there somewhere. It just has to do with thinking that it's possible for something miraculous to happen. That it has to do with music and people and. Uh, playing and all that. I mean, I don't, I don't have the kind of, the particular kind of discipline it takes to play something exactly the same way each time, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And we're all in the band, we're all in it for the thrills and for the, the, uh, the, the changes and the difference and, uh, and you know, to see what, what new will happen. That's, that's all part of it. I mean, there are axioms in, uh, in the music business and stuff like that that are, uh, that we're, you know, we're sort of going against the grain and in terms of what the standard formulas for success are, which is that, uh, you know, if you're going on stage and performing, um, you know, a popular tune, you, you do it like the record and stuff like that. Uh, all that stuff is, uh, you know, has never been very meaningful to us.
I think that's it. Happy birthday, Jerry. Thanks for listening, everybody. I love this interview. Peace.